Hello, I'm Brett Arnold, the Alumni Officer at Leeds Trinity University and absolutely delighted today to welcome back former student Ryan Needham. Ryan's the bassist in the band Yard Act from Leeds who are absolutely huge at the minute. They're just about to go on a nine month tour so thank you so much for coming in Ryan, really appreciate you coming in, it's great to see you and I knew you were a media student here 10 years ago. Can you remember when you were last on campus, what you were doing and what your career aspirations were at the time? Um, well, I kind of had a bit of a staggered uh, experience, really, because I came uh, here originally in 2001, um, and it was media, communication, and cultural studies, I think, was the, uh, was the course. But, um, yeah, so I did two years then, and then I was in a another band in the sort of mid 2000s that um, we had a record deal and we, we again we were away on tour a lot and I remember chatting to John and explaining the situation John Poulter who, who I think has left now yeah. uh, and uh, yeah and I was like I've got this opportunity I'm, I, and he, he, he kind of told me about that you could defer and then so yeah I, so I did my first two years and I had a, a 10 year gap yeah. and then I came back at the ripe old age of 30 and uh, in 2011 and just did my final year then. Yeah. So yeah, 2012 would have been the last time that I, that was on campus. Yeah. Um, well, great you did come back to finish everything after the gap. And how would you say your fellow students might remember you? Um, oh, well, I guess from, from each different era. I, I, the, the first, yeah, the first time I was here, 2001 um, was, was Probably quite. Uh, I was probably quite reckless, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't do that 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 well in the in the first two years. Just I, it was my sort of first time, you know, like mm -hmm. everyone, first time away from home, blah blah. blah. Uh, but I really enjoyed the course, but didn't. I think I didn't. I didn't turn up for a lot. So you know, missing stuff and just the yeah. heady excitement of being away from home. But then, when I came back ten years later, I think the people and I'm still remain friends with quite a few people yeah. I think they'd re just remember me as being this weirder older guy that just did all his work and really got my head down yeah. but after yeah. your break you did come back and get a first yeah so, I did yeah, yeah yeah luckily it was only based on my my final year oh, okay. I think yeah. Uh, but yeah yeah I proper got you know I think the uh, the advantage of sort of a, a bit of 10 years of life experience and stuff, yeah. I really uh, cherish the opportunity to get in the library and have access to all that stuff, really. Yeah. Whereas my previous idiotic young <laughs> self didn't so much. But yeah. <laughs> And it's really nice for us, obviously, to see you doing so well. And so many of the staff are big fans. I think because Yard Act, you know, the reputation of the band's getting so big. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard this bit. There's a few... Uh, few fans knocking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and were you recognised as a talented musician when you were on campus for either of the times you were here as a student? No, I don't think so. I, yeah, the first time around, uh, we, there was a bit of a music module, but it was quite small in 2001. And I guess like even then, um, sort of recording studio technology wasn't anywhere near what it, what it is now. And, you know, to have like, something like this yeah uh, the music equivalent would have been you know hundreds of thousands of pounds but there was there were like samplers and we did quite a lot of uh audio and sound recording for like foley and for people that were making mm. films and stuff like that but me and some sort of friends used to just go we we managed to get a bit of a sweet deal with the with the, the people that yeah. ran the that uh building they, they'd let us go in there every now and then if we were tidy yeah. and just like rehearse we take a drum kit in there yeah. and stuff so a little bit definitely not talented but uh, <laughs> you know yeah. uh, ambitious let's say yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. I read that you when the band was launched utilized your own um, sort of design skills to really help launch stuff yeah was, were there any skills that you picked up here yeah definitely yeah um, I think I can't, re with the first time around, it was definitely, I remember doing logo design and branding and marketing. Um, and yeah, I had to make, I made a, uh, like a fake record label. And I remember the, actually the logo that, that we, uh, that, I, that I did for that, it's not that dissimilar to, uh, <laughs> to the Yard Act logo, really. Yeah, um, yeah I, I did learn a lot of that stuff. 
Especially, the, yeah, the second time around. Brilliant. And yeah. um, is there a memory that stands out from your time as a student at all? Um, I don't know, really. I think... I definitely remember getting into some heavy debates with John Poulter about the sort of uh, the um, political history of Ireland. That was the thing that he was... Uh, I think he wrote, he wrote a couple of books on, on that. Uh, yeah, I remember, I remember those, those lectures pretty, pretty well. But yeah, just the, the first time around it was like... Because I, I came from a relatively sort of... Not rural, but semi-rural... Uh, play, uh, from Derbyshire, Derbyshire originally, yeah. and um, yeah, like a small mining town thing, and it wasn't. And then moving to Leeds, like came for the open day, and, and I, I was kind of glad that this place wasn't slap bang in the yeah. city centre because I, I think I would have found that quite dull. And I, and I still got actually quite homesick, and uh, and and kind of stayed out in Horsforth quite a lot because it was just a bit. I don't know. I was quite I was quite nervous back then, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just those first few months of being here and like yeah. adapting like, and yeah, yeah, just adapting and being away away from safety net of family and home really. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's yeah, that's why I kind of um had such a good time here really, because it was it did feel a bit like you could dip into the big crazy city stuff if you yeah. want, but like actually being out in Horsforth, it you know, visually kind of looked a lot like where I'm from back yeah. home. So oh. it, it was it was a... Uh, a home away from home. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And um, I don't know if you're aware, we've got very strong Leeds Trinity links with um, the band in that Nathan Clark from the Brunel was one of our alumni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know Abby McClure, one of our MA journalism graduates, um, interviewed you recently for the Yorkshire Evening Post. So yeah. I think it's always great for us to um, see our other alumni um, involved. I don't know if you know that they were both graduates from here as well. No, I didn't know... I think um, I think Abby mentioned it actually, but I, yeah, I didn't know. I'm I'm really good friends with Nate at Brunel, yeah. and uh, I didn't know that. I guess that would have been a sports based. Yeah, it thing. was a sports yeah, yeah. degree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'd love to obviously welcome him back as well at any point in the future. Yeah, I have to have a word with him. Yeah. He's a very busy man. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, you performed a lot locally um, with the band. Um, how would you say the Leeds music scene's changed over the last few years, and has that benefited the band at all? Um, I feel like uh, I don't know. Well, I guess you know the last two years we can kind of strike off. That's that's changed a hell of a lot, hell of a lot of things, really. But um, it's always been, you know, it's always been really ripe the Leeds music scene. I guess with the three universities and. Um, yeah, and just that like area of like LS six, like yeah. not. It depends what's kind of. It's down to what's kind of mainstream at the time, really. But where you know, in the in the in the early two thousands when it was, you know, main, main mainstream music, pop music was like guitar bands and stuff. Yeah. But well, I remember like living out in in Hyde Park and obviously all, all those back-to-back -back houses have all got basements and pretty much every one of those houses, those basements had like a drum kit in and it was, uh, and I think that's why so much stuff came out in uh, Leeds in the mid-2000s. Um, but yeah, like now, I think the music scene, yeah, there's a lot of people playing noisy music again now and I think, and, and quite political, Music, which has always been kind of associated with Leeds, yeah. Leeds bands with the whole post-punk thing back in sort of late seventies. There was a lot of scritty Politty and Gang of yeah. Four and uh, Mekons and Delta Del Five come from here as well, maybe. But um, yeah, it is good. I think there's just a lot of people wanting to be angry, and you know, there's a lot of unrest, and I think that's quite reflective in the sort of music. Yes. Yeah quite prevalent at the moment not not just in Leeds but sort of yeah. you know having just been on a nationwide tour see that a lot really mm. and, I, and, I, and as audiences I think people are enjoying having that reflected back because everyone's feeling it right yeah <laughs> with Brexit and yeah. then the thing it's yeah. like I, th I think that's why this kind of especially this spoken word social commentary slightly politicized music's really connect seems to be really connecting with people yeah. um 
and that's not just in guitar music, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that really stood out to me when I was sort of reading a bit more about the band and yourself um, was that, you know, two years ago you're sleeping at a friend's house and then after that you've got Elton John, Dave Grohl raving about the band. How, how do you go from sort of one, one of those to the other? Yeah, I just, uh, it, 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 it has, it's been an absolute whirlwind. I am, um, yeah, I just, I needed a, I, I was sort of between houses really, I needed uh, a place to live for a couple of months. Mm. And uh, yeah, James, who's the, uh, the front person in Yard Act, he, him and his wife just said, oh, we've got a spare room, just come and stay. Yeah. And it was out in, in Meanwood. Yeah, when we just got, we just kind of, because he's played in bands for years and so have I. Yeah. And I guess when you put sort of a bit of free time and proximity yeah. uh, and a couple of musicians together, I guess you're going to sort of yeah. start mucking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we just started writing things and recording on a four track. We were both really into a band called Guided by Voices, like right. a, an American band, and they're quite lo-fi and they record everything, or, or sort of historically recorded everything quite fast and tons of it, like, you know, 20 songs on an album. Yeah. We were just gonna do that and make cassettes and be like, uh, I don't know, sort of, yeah, pretentious, arty yeah. Uh, thing. So, so being in the same house, was that like a real sort of creative opportunity really that came through um, the time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it was just up in the up in the loft. But yeah, then we, so we started talking about doing that and then this was like summer to the back end of 2019, so just before the pandemic. And then we just got a couple of other friends. Uh, it wasn't Sam and, uh, and Jay, it was, uh, we had another, a uh, couple of mates um, playing with us. And we, yeah, we just got in a rehearsal room and just did some, just, it was just for fun really. And then we did yeah. three shows and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, me and James, the other two wanted to concentrate on their band because they're in a, in a band called Tree Boy and Ark who are really great and they're still friends. Yeah. Um, but that was, this was kind of a bit of fun. The Yard Act project was a bit of fun for them and that's kind of their main band. But yeah. me and James wanted to keep going with it. So. Yeah, we just u utilised the time that we were afforded with the lockdown mm. thing to uh, to write, really, yeah. Yeah, and obviously it's been a meteoric rise, I think it's fair to say, uh, for the band for the last couple of years. <laughs> Where do you see the next two years and beyond that? Mm. I don't know, because like month on month, just more outlandish things have just happened. And uh, yeah. yeah, like things just keep keep landing in the inbox and yeah. uh but yeah we've we've got a manager and a booking agent and stuff but um yeah it's good it's it's been really nice to get out we all love like touring and playing live and connecting with people especially after everyone's been kind of starved of that for two years um so yeah i think we'll spend the rest of this year touring and playing the album out yeah uh and do some festivals we're going over to america next yeah. next week for yeah. a couple of months to do stuff like Coachella and South yeah. by Southwest, which yeah. is, you know, yeah, you're right. Like a year ago, I wouldn't have yeah. uh, anticipated this coming, but, uh, yeah. but then after that, just head down and, and do album two. Yeah. The difficult second album, yeah. apparently. Yeah. And what's most exciting for you about going on the tour? Um, I guess it's hugely beneficial that we're all really close friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a cliche, but just traveling and moving around, you know, yeah. it's really privileged position to be in because not a lot of people get to do that kind of thing. And, and yeah, just meeting people and connecting uh, and, and just kind of seeing how, uh, how the sort of, it, it's very uniquely a reflection of sort of a certain British life. I think the lyrics that James writes, are, you know, the minutiae of like, you know, day-to-day -day British, you know, things like Pound Shop, Terracotta yeah. Frogs and uh, some of the characters and the themes. I always thought, that, like, I always wondered how they would connect in places like Norway or yeah. France or, you know, or America. Uh, but they do seem to be doing and it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just dead vibey. Just the vibe in the rooms are really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And because you are going on tour for nine months, we sorted you out some gifts as a thank you for coming oh, in. Wow. So. We have a journal, nice. a power bank, a mini speaker, 
uh, a beer tankard and a business card holder. So oh, I, was, wow. I was wanting to ask you, out of all those things there, if you took them on tour, which one do you think would be <coughs> used the most? Well, I, I have one already, and I, so I wouldn't use it. However, James, uh, the, the, the front person, is a, a nightmare for nicking everyone's power banks. Uh, and, he won't, okay. he, and, he, and he's constantly on his phone as well, and his phone always, and he's just like, has anyone got a power bank? It's <laughs> like, yeah, you just buy one. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate that to him. Right. And then... I might use the journal actually, because uh, yeah, you know, iPhone notes don't really always cut it. Yeah. Especially, you know, if we're if we're going, if we're driving through America, maybe it, maybe I'll document that like a, a big old cliche that I am. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously we were asking you about you know what it was like for you on campus. Would you have any advice for any sort of students that are either in bands at the minute or maybe see that for themselves in the future? Um. I guess beyond the the sort of all the old cliches, I think with with this band in particular, and it's not always possible because you know you can only say no to things when you're actually getting offered them. But I think sort of exploring the power of no and and uh, and not doing everything. It's sort of you know we we get offered so many things and some things that that seem like they're going to be a really sort of uh, beneficial thing are often times it's just uh you know they're not always that beneficial to you and sometimes they're a bit of voice yeah just just choosing wisely really um and not yeah and that all comes into sort of not rushing into into things and taking you know going at your own pace i think it's really important i mean that's easy for me to say because i'm like 40 years old and uh i've definitely been going at my own pace <laughs> yeah. however no i think it is important i think it's important to be open, but not just to say yes to everything and, and, and utilizing your time and your energy well, because you can often get sidetracked from the path, as long as you kind of have a vague idea where you're going. I think, you know, there's always dangling carrots of like, well, this will be good for you because of X, Y, and Z. And, and it's not always, yeah. That's, that's quite negative advice, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the power of no, it, it, you know, yeah. the things you say no to are more important than, than the things you say yes to, I, I think. Yeah. And as you hopefully realised from the warm welcome you got, we were over the moon to welcome you back to yeah, campus yeah. today. What, what made you come back? Was there um, a particular memory or was it just nice to come back to campus and um, see how it was? Well, it feels like it's uh, my 10 year anniversary of checking in yeah. again. Maybe I'm just going to make that a thing. But uh, now I bumped into, uh, yeah, I've just been, you know, bumping into people from here. At, at shows and stuff and it just keeps cropping up yeah. quite a lot yeah so and big year for Leeds Leeds 2023 20, next year do you ever see maybe the band performing here on campus at any time yeah I'd, I'd be I'd be well up for that I'd have to try and sell it to the others yeah uh, I'll, I'll give you lots of power banks if that helps <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah 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 but but no I mean yeah, we'd, we'd love to sort of have, have you and the band involved if that was an opportunity. Well, well, apparently Nath Clark from the Brunelk is quite a good drummer. Right. And um, Nick from the Kaiser Chiefs went here as well. Yeah. That's, no, that's two drummer. Yeah, we could, have, we could have a three drummer version of Yard Act. That'd be pretty yeah. badass. It'd be wow. like Stomp. Yeah. <laughs> Form a new band when they're here. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we really appreciate you coming, especially you know, how busy you are with the tour.